Okay, everyone, thank you so much for joining us. I am Katie Pfeiffer, the Senior Director of Programs at Volunteer New York. Um, we are gathered today in honor of MLK Day. I know many of you are past volunteers with us. Um, this is our 11th MLK Day that we as Volunteer New York are celebrating. Um, and so, yes, it is different this year, um, but that presented an opportunity for us at Volunteer New York and all of you in the community um, and so we are going to go ahead and I'm going to introduce you to my colleague in just a moment, um, but we really are so grateful that you're spending part of your afternoon with us. Um, I'm going to ask my colleague Nicole to go ahead and hit record, and then I'm going to hand it over to Charles Curtis. Um, he is our community outreach manager. He'll tell you a little bit about himself, and he is going to lead us through this conversation, um, volunteering with equity in mind. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. And we're gonna get started now. Charles? Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Katie, for those kind words. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Charles Curtis, and I'm the Community Outreach Manager here at Volunteer New York. Now, normally my role as Outreach Manager would have me out in the community, meeting many of you at events and seminars, farmers markets and festivals, but like everything else, this year's MLK Day is a bit different. For this year's MLK Day celebration, we thought to bring the community together for us to share a bit and together learn to be better volunteers and advocates for those around us. Before I dive into this webinar, I wanna remind each of you of a few things. First, this webinar is interactive and that means I'm gonna need your help. Now, I, I won't ask too many questions, but I will ask questions, so be ready. And when I do ask a question, please put it in the chat because this way we'll be able to keep things a bit more organized and keep the conversation flowing. And second, while we talk about some serious stuff, I want you to have fun. While I don't necessarily need you to turn on your microphone so I can hear you laugh, it's okay to laugh at home or not. I mean, if you think it's weird, I'll, I'll let you judge the, that one for yourself. Okay, so you may write your question in the chat at any time during this webinar. While we'll be answering all of our questions at the end, this will give you the opportunity to read your question and please don't feel as though you can't ask your question for fear that it might sound politically incorrect or it might be a bit embarrassing. However, if you would like your question to be read anonymously, please message your question to one of the volunteer New York staff and we'll read it on your behalf. If you notice in the chat function, each one of the volunteer New York staff has volunteer New York beside their name. Um, so please just choose one of them, preferably Katie's, because she's the guru for everything Zoom, and I really need her right now, okay? All right, so. Uh, are we good? Now, this is one of those times I need you to participate, so I'm going to go ahead and look at the chat so you can tell me we're good. Yes? There you go. That's what I'm looking at. All right, this is what I talked about. All right, cool. So in this presentation, I'm going to use a lot of I and we statements. I think that it's important that we know that when I'm giving examples, sharing stories, or other brilliant ideas that I'm talking about all of us. Now, I know that not everything will apply, and that's okay. But last and most important, I want each of you to know that this is a safe space, or some would call this a brave space even, to share. And with that, be, that being said, I'd like to invite you to the Brave Space. Together, we will create Brave Space because there is no such thing as a safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scars and we all have caused wounds. In this space, we seek to turn down the volume of the outside world. We amplify voices that fight to be heard elsewhere. We call each other to more truth and love. We have the right to start somewhere and continue to grow. We have the responsibility to examine what we think we know. We will not be perfect. This space will not be perfect. It will not always be what we wish it to be, but together, it will be our brave space and we will work on it side by side, okay? 
as we begin as we begin to dive into this topic, I felt it was important to start at Volunteer New York's core mission to inspire, mobilize, and equip individuals and groups to take positive action to address pressing challenges, support nonprofits, and strengthen the quality of life in our community. Our mission is simple, to inspire volunteers to get off the sidelines and get involved to support local nonprofits. We strive to be a beacon of volunteerism for all members of our community, and sometimes in ways that they never may have considered before. Maybe through experiences with us, you'll mobilize some of your family and friends to join you the next time you help support a nonprofit or attend other special events and webinars to equip you on your journey as a change maker. Above all, our hope is that you consider the role you can play in helping to meet the challenges that face our community so that we can tackle these issues head on and together as a community, strengthened by our commitment to serving others. Now, what exactly does any of that have to do with volunteering with social justice and equity in mind? And I'll tell you, you know, the global pandemic has shined a light on the glaring inequalities between those that have and those that haven't. In some communities, food insecurity has gone up four times the normal amount, bringing people who ordinarily wouldn't use these services to sometimes the two hour long food, food distribution line. Others live in fear that the rent relief will end. And I think all of us are pretty sick about not being able to find paper towels or toilet tissue again. I know I am personally. In honor of Dr. King, I offer you one of my favorite quotes. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? But for the sake of this webinar, I offer you a remixed version to this quote. How do I show up for others? Now, don't get me wrong, I, I love this quote. The only problem is that how we show up for others is just as important as what we do for others. As we as volunteers take positive action to address pressing challenges, support nonprofits and strengthen the quality of life in our community, what happens if in our pursuit to do for others, we end up causing more harm? To illustrate that, let me give you a few examples. Now, have you ever heard the statement, I wanna show my kids how good they have it? And that's the reason why you brought some of them to volunteer. Or I wanna help those who are less fortunate than myself, or, or I wanna help poor people, or I have to complete my community service hours, and that's the reason why I'm here. Or if you're at home and you think, well, these clothes are dirty and ratty, so I'll just donate them somewhere. Or my personal favorite, the social media servant, you know, that person that goes to a, a, a community service event and you see them usually taking pictures more than they're actually doing anything. Or telling people that beggars can't be choosers and, and they should be grateful and that's the reason why you're giving something, either your food or, or clothing. Or even the thought that thinking that you as the volunteer are different from the people you're serving. These, in each of these examples, we create a distance between ourselves and the people that we serve. Because if we do, we don't have to see these people as real people, or we don't have to acknowledge that something may be wrong with the world that we live in. We can continue to walk past a person in need and go back to our cars like absolutely nothing ever happened. It's only through looking at volunteering with social justice and equity in mind can we bridge the gap between us who volunteer and the people that we actually serve. So by the end of this webinar, my hope is for each of us to really be able to answer the question, how am I showing up for others? The truth is by the end of this session, you may not have an answer, but a better understanding and that's okay. In all honesty, for some, this may be the first time you've ever thought about this question. And for others, this question may keep you up awake at night. No matter where you are, our time together will help you achieve these two goals. One, how can I be a better advocate and volunteer in the work of social justice and equity? And two, what can I do to help in the work of social justice and equity? Now, in order for all of us to be on the same page, I thought it was, it was important first 
for all of us to have an equal understanding so that when we're talking about social justice and equity, we know that we're all talking about the same thing. Now, a lot of these terms have become interchangeable over the years, but it's really important to know all of the differences. So diversity and culture. Diversity is the unique set of qualities that separate people as individuals, such as race, gender, religion, physical and mental abilities, work and learning styles, geographic locations, economic status, sexual orientation, and many other traits. While culture is the, total, the sum total, excuse me, of values, attitudes, behaviors, and symbols that are transmitted within groups and communicated to successive generations to provide a cognitive map for actions and interpreting reality. Culture is a significant lens that influences the way people think, perceive, and act. So to wrap all of that up, diversity is all of the things that you can see, while culture is all of the things that we can't. Got it? You don't have to respond. Okay. All right. So integration versus inclusion. An integrated community is a setting where lives, where everyone lives together, while inclusion is the actual building of community of different minded individuals, merging of belief that we are all different and that we will live and worship differently and that's that we all should have full access to the same advantages, okay? Last but not least, equality, excuse me, equity versus equality. Now, equality is typically defined as treating everyone the same and giving one access to the same opportunities, while equity refers to the proportional representation, either race, class, or gender, okay? So the best example I can give for the real difference between equality versus equity is the following graphic. Here, equality means everyone gets the same thing. As you can see the box. All equity means that we give everyone the tools that they need to be on an equal footing. Sometimes it's a box, sometimes it's a ramp, okay? So what about social justice? What are some things that come to mind when we talk or think about social justice? Is social justice a noun or a verb? Now see, this is one of the times that I'm gonna need you, okay? we are going to activate the whiteboard, okay? So you will be able to type in your definitions um, into the chat and we will be able to put some of those on the whiteboard, okay? So I'm gonna give you a moment, get your thoughts together and we will go ahead and type a few. Oh, I'm not seeing anything. Well, make me call some of you. I will. You can type right in the chat. Okay. Caring for all. I like that. Okay, these are some really, really great comments, and I really wish we could would type them all. Um, so I'll just point out a few, um, because it, it's looking like there's a, a couple that are, that are sticking out. Um, uh, social justice is ensuring that all people have equal opportunities and are treated equally, ensuring that there are no barriers to people reaching their optimum potential. It's a really good one. 
social justice seems to be just giving justice equally to all, no matter what culture you're from. Really like that one. Access to economic, educational, legal opportunities, equality. Love it. Okay, in the interest of time, while these are some really, really great ones, hold on to that, right? So I wanna share with you my definition. For me, social justice is the action of creating, demanding, and sometimes liberating spaces that should be intended for all people in such a way that everyone has the same access and experience. Okay, so acts of social justice can usually be found in four arenas, as someone said in the chat. Access, or the ability to do something, Equity, which we talked about as having an equal seat at the table. Participation, which means that allowing us a voice at that table. And then rights, which is making it a law so that you can never deny me a seat at the table. So why is any of this important? As a volunteer, your acts of kindness and service are indeed acts of social justice. When you donate food or clothing, you are providing access to food for people who may not have it otherwise. When you participate in a literacy or mentoring program, you are creating equity in the classroom by closing the achievement gap. Simple acts and the search for social justice are what we do every day. And the best example is found here. The fight for social justice and equity is one in which everyone has a seat at the table, an equal vote, and is protected by law. Robert F. Kennedy once said, democracy is messy and it's hard. It's never easy. And the same can be said for social justice and equity. On the surface, the fight for social justice and equity has become synonymous with anti-cop rhetoric. And for that reason, and many others, the term social justice has just gotten a bad rap. But the reality is, at its core, social justice is the fight for liberation for all people. So onward to the fun stuff. How can I be a better advocate and volunteer in the work of social justice? It's simple, ish. Thing number one, learn about yourself. Let two, learn about others. Three, widen your circle. And four, simply advocate. It sounds simple enough, right? So the first step in becoming a better advocate and volunteer is knowing yourself, more specifically, your interests and your biases. As a volunteer, knowing what your interests are makes a world of difference when you choose to dedicate your time and effort to give back. When you as a volunteer are invested into the project that you're passionate about, you give more freely and the experience is better for everyone around you. To help aid you in the journey of discovery, I have two resources for you. First is a resource by a great partner and a great friend of Volunteer New York called Hands On Greater Richmond. There they've developed an amazing worksheet, like literally, you, you don't even know how happy we were here in the staff that we saw it. Um, but you'll learn what you value and in what ways you might wanna give back. Now, while we could spend hours on this resource alone, we will make this available in a version um, to each of you at the end of this presentation. Now, for the sake of this presentation, I've taken just a small bit of the worksheet to highlight, okay? In this section of the worksheet, we learn more about what's important to you. Um, this exercise is for you to, to take this list of values and to choose your top 10. And then from your top 10 to whittle that down to eight. And then from eight to four. And so by the end of this, you will have the top four values that you cherish the most. Now, while it's not an exact science, you'll see that these four guiding principles usually carry into most, if not all of your daily life. And sometimes this little bit of self-discovery will teach you that there's a pattern in places we serve, friends we make, and experiences we have. Now, the second resource is simply Volunteer New York's website. Now, maybe you never noticed before, but finding ways to give back in a meaningful way is really simple. Um, one of my favorite functions on the Volunteer New York website is actually the, the search by cause button. Found under volunteers, you can find volunteer opportunities in area that are close to your interests. 
So if you're passionate about hunger and homelessness or the environment, you can find it all, you can find all open opportunities by clicking your preferred interest area. Okay, and if you notice at the bottom of that screen, there's the website to search by cause, volunteernewyork.org slash cause. Okay. Now the second way to learning better, <clears throat> to learning more about yourself is understanding your biases. And before you raise your hand or you type in the chat that you have none and that you're not biased at all, I think that if we take a closer look at ourselves, we will realize that we all have a few unspoken biases. And maybe they come from cultural norms like the belief of one group of people thinks or acts differently than another, or maybe we've learned them through experience like believing that one group of people drives better than another. Living in New York, I know we all believe that. Well, those of us who are living in New York anyway, but it, it's okay, you can admit it. I've done it too. To be honest, I did it earlier today on my way here, but that's neither here nor there and we'll move on. Okay, but anyway, so researchers have found most Americans have been exposed to a culture with enough negative messages about African-Americans and other marginalized groups that as much as 80% of white Americans hold unconscious bias against marginalized groups. Bias so automatic that it kicks in even before a person can process it. Now these unspoken biases left unchecked creep into our experiences and our interactions with others, especially our volunteering. While those biases may not lead to outright discrimination, they definitely will lead you in the direction of donating that can of sloppy Joe that's been sitting in your cabinet for three years and you have no intention on eating it. Or giving away clothes that have holes or stains. Or in my case, a teacher telling my mother how articulate I am, as if I should be anything else. And I'm sure if my mother is watching, and I saw her in the chat, so I know she is, she is mad right now just thinking about it. Well, maybe at the fact that I brought it up. But again, that's neither here nor there. So friends, I've scoured the internet and this one resource kept popping up. It's the link that's right here on this screen. Now, this test, the implicit bias test was created by Harvard to show what implicit bias we have between two things. Now I took one of them and while the test is not at all what I thought it was going to be, it really was quite interesting. So this link and others like it will be made available at the end of this presentation. So once you've learned a little bit more about yourself, the next step is to educate yourself about the world around you. In particular, the lives and experiences of people unlike yourself. As a volunteer, this thought of educating yourself will help you connect better to the people or community you're serving. To help you in this work, a good rule of thumb is to first research the mission and work of an organization before going to volunteer. The more you learn about what they do, you'll think more about how you can aid or assist in their mission. The education doesn't stop there though. While on site, ask questions about the people or community you're serving, or, or if you can, talk to the people that you're actually serving. Learn more about their experiences and connect with them on a deeper level than you may have done before. Okay. Last, the staff and board of directors of Volunteer New York has created a document of some of our favorite educational resources. From podcasts to movies, these resources are all handpicked by our staff and board to aid in learning more about people. While this resource is meant to be helpful for you, please feel free to reach out with any recommendations that you have that you think should be added to this list. Another great, another great resource you'll have access to once this presentation is over. But I do wanna highlight a few of our favorite recommendations. Um, first is the Black Lives Matter Instructional Library. It's a collection of eBooks and audiobooks for children and adults on topics, a host of topics ranging, ranging from self-love to empowerment, racism and discrimination. Um, for those of you on the call who have participated in our Camp Bolo program this summer, our campers really enjoyed having access to this resource, and we really believe you will too. Now, under websites, while I really don't care for the title, the 103 Things White People Can Do for Racial Justice gives brilliant ideas for anyone regardless of color to be involved in effective and lasting change. Now, last, 
is trigger warning with Killer Mike under the movies and television section. Now, don't let the title scare you away. For those of you that don't know, Killer Mike is actually an Atlanta-based rapper and community activist. His work on and off stage can be a bit off color, but if you look beyond your own biases, there's some really great gems to be had in that docu-series. Fair warning, it has adult themes, profanity, and some sometimes questionable material. So watch ahead before allowing any children to view. Widening your circle, excuse me, what? So widening your circle or widening your gaze is really all about adding people to your network. It's only through the building of community can we hope to strengthen the quality of life for everyone around us. In the week of July 14 to 20, 1995, the temperatures in Chicago were extreme. The humidities were very high and there were a series of meteorological conditions that made it very dangerous. In a single week, 700 people lost their lives outside of friendship networks, family ties, community organizations reach, and social service providers. Now, while this story is a bit gruesome, there is a glimmer of hope because those communities where the residents were interconnected fared far better than those that didn't. This, this statistic has nothing to do with rich or poor, one race over another. In general, communities where people checked on their neighbors, looked after them, cared for them, survived. In our work as volunteers or even as people, having people in your network that you may not think like you is a good thing. Now, I'm not suggesting that you get rid of all your closest friends, but, but find someone that challenges your thoughts about how you see the world. Someone that you can ask the tough questions and get honest feedback, especially if you don't think you're going to like it. So I encourage all of us to take a look at our networks and take a moment to widen your circle. Now talking about widening your circle, tomorrow Volunteer New York will be hosting Sunday Supper, inspired by Dr. Martin Luther King's vision that people of diverse backgrounds would come together to discuss injustices of the day and create a plan for action. Sunday Supper calls people to engage in dialogue about issues affecting their communities. So I, I hope you have an opportunity if you already previously signed up and I hope to see you there. You'll get even more of me. Now, and the last bullet is advocate. Interesting fact, the word advocate comes from the Latin word advocare, which means to call to one's aid. Now, sorry, that was a little nerd moment, but, but follow me with this. If we take out all of the policy and the politics, the optics and the red tape, the fear and the doubt, to volunteer or to advocate is simply to come to someone's aid. And as you answer the question of how can I be a better advocate or volunteer in the work of social justice and equity, simply come to one's aid. Come to someone's aid in the classroom, the boardroom, or even the bathroom. Everywhere and anywhere you see someone in need, come to their aid. Don't sit on the sidelines, make a difference. And as I close, let's answer the questions of what can I do to help in the work of social justice and equity? Super simple. Social justice is like volunteering. Anyone can do it. I hope that through our time together, you understand that you don't have to look a certain way or, or be a certain race or ethnicity to be an advocate for social justice and equity. All you have to do is be a person who is willing to help. There are many different ways to give back, time, talent, and money. Use the tools that you have to give back. If you have time, dedicate it. If you have talent, donate it. And if you have money, give it to me and I promise I won't do anything too reckless with it. I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself, but seriously, you know, you know what? Never, never mind, never mind. All right, look for ways to give back. There are lots of small ways to make a big impact. Often we overlook these opportunities right in our own backyard. If you don't know already, what are the problems that exist in your own community? Now, maybe there's something that you can do to make it that life a little bit better, everyone in your community. 
And last, find your own path. We're all different people, and so our volunteer journey should be different as well. The things that I'm passionate about, you may not care for, and that's okay. But whatever it is, find that thing and change the world. I hope that in our brief time together, you've learned just a few tips and tricks to aid in your journey to be a better volunteer and advocate. Little did I know that literally one bit over a year ago, I'd be coming to New York and I'd be presenting this webinar or how much it would change the way that I personally approach my giving back. So to all of you, thank you for your time and your attention this afternoon.